Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Whitney and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I am Tennille. And I'm Whitney. And today we are taking a look at a Swedish film. Yes. We are watching Peter No Tale. Mm-hmm. And this was provided to us by Leomanade. Thank you so much. They were able to find it for us, and we watched it. Mm -hmm. We did watch the English-British dub of it. So yes. it wasn't the original Swedish, but I don't know. I think it still worked out pretty well. Casual reminder that if you would like to find movies for us to watch for Animation Pilgrimage, be sure to check the list below. Like we say at the beginning of episode, or beginning of every episode, these are in chronological order, so don't go looking for us and fil for films for, like, 1997. Yes. You can look at the list. Uh, there's a link below the video that is the Animation Pilgrimage watch list. Mm -hmm. Click that link and you can see every year that we have done research for. Yes. So we've done research for the next couple years. Mm -hmm. So on that list, any movie listed in blue means we have not found it or we have not found either English subtitles or a dub of that movie. Yeah. And if you guys can find it or send it to us, we will absolutely... Cover it. Cover it. Yeah. And just send that to animationpilgrimage at gmail.com. Yep. And that is the best way to contact us and find more movies for us to watch. Because I would love to watch literally every single movie eventually. Yeah. You know, as long as we can get our hands on it. Mm -hmm. But some movies are just lost to time. Uh-huh. And uh, anyway, getting back to Peter no -Tail, this was pretty cute. Yeah, honestly, this was pretty all right. Now, I, I do want to correct myself. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the last, last episode, time. I said there was about rabbits. Mm -hmm. That's not right. It's about cats. Yeah. But the main character is so ugly, he doesn't necessarily look like he is actually a cat mm -hmm. when he's standing on his back legs. <laughs> he looks like a cat. The Okay, so probably my biggest complaint for this film is that the... The, the character designs themselves are fine. They're actually pretty cute. But sometimes whoever the animator is or something like that isn't quite getting the proportions right or the shapes of the face right. And so it can be a little ugly, mm -hmm. a little off-putting. However, that being said, the animation is almost always pretty charming. Yeah, like, the actual movement is very well done in this movie, especially when the cats are, on all fours, acting like cats. They mm -hmm. look very convincing. Mm-hmm. No, I, I really enjoyed this film. It's a mixed bag. It's one of those things where I, I have mixed feelings on it. However, it's mostly positive feelings. Yeah. So how about we go into a story synopsis so people can know what mo what, what what happened in the movie? Yes, what is Peter No Tale? All right, so we start on a farm in the country of Sweden, mm -hmm. and there is a cat who has given birth 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 to many litter of kittens. <laughs> Multiple litters. Multiple litters. Five hundred babies. No, no, it's five, five kittens or something like that. Yeah. And one of them is born without a tail. And the owner of the farm is angry that his milk sales are down. So. Well, okay. There's the person who owns, like, there's the farmer, and then there's the person who owns the farm. Oh yeah. There's the owner of the farm, and then the people that actually do the work on the farm. Right. And the guy that actually works on the farm, he's like, well. A little bit of milk for the cats isn't that much. And the owner's like, nope, get rid of them. Then. I don't want these kitties on my farm. Yes. So four of them were already promised for, like, other families or whatever. But the one without a tail was not. So dude has to get rid of the, the, the kitten with no tail. And it almost looks like he's going to drown it in a bucket of water. Yeah. But then someone drives up in a car. Uh random guy. He has, it's a family member, like a cousin or like something like that. Like a friend or a family who member. Who lives in the city. Yeah. And he just happened to be going home. Mm -hmm. And so the farmhand just slips the cat into the dude's car. Yeah. And so the guy takes the cat home and the family adopts it. Mm -hmm. There's a cute scene where the, the guy in the car who I think we'll just refer to as husband from now on, because he's the, the dad. dad of the family. 
uh, he thinks that like a scorpion or something like that has gone into his groceries. Because he's an idiot. But, yeah. You know. And so like the whole family is like around the table and just like carefully taking things out and like, oh, what was that? Oh no. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, it's a kitten. Hooray. <laughs> so they adopt the kitten. Mm-hmm. The, the daughter names it Peter, mm-hmm. who is immediately mocked and called Peter No Tail because yes. he has no tail. And hijinks ensue. There's a, th- a thing where he jumps on a skateboard and it causes chaos. Yeah, it. for a while, I thought the film was really going to go like a Beethoven route where it's more so just about like... A cat and a living cat with a family. Living with a family happen. and the hijinks ensue. But then it changes. It changes because we pass like a year later and now he's more of like an adult cat. Mm-hmm. And he goes outside, he gets chased by a dog, and he ends up in an alleyway with other cats. And he stands on his hind legs and the true movie begins. Yes. And this is honestly the part that I'm like... No. I kind of liked the cute, wacky hijinks. The cat animation was so good when it was acting like a cat. Yeah. And now we just get a cast of anthropomorphic cats that don't act like cats anymore. And Mm -hmm. it's very, I'm going to say boring, but like that's not entirely true. It still has its charm, but yeah, like the other stuff was much stronger than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he wanders into an alleyway that is controlled by Mean Mike. The who, alley cat. Who, who is a cat who has a really, really long tail. In fact, it's longer than anybody else's tails. And, and they he, keep making dick jokes about it. Oh, absolutely. There's it, a lot of dick jokes about so, cat's tails. So many euphemisms about cat tails being their penises. Yep. It's just kind of constant. Like every... Five minutes or so, there's another one. Mm -hmm. So Mike is mean to him and continuously tricks and berates and is incredibly cruel to Mm -hmm. Peter. And on top of that, he very often gets the general cat community in on it. And they're all totally okay with Mike doing whatever the hell he wants, even though he's an absolute piece of shit. Yeah. So from here, we just kind of get a lot of varied scenes of things happening. Like, mm-hmm. they meet a cute cat, and... She's like Molly Silknose or something like that? Dude, I don't remember. She's such a non-character in the yeah, movie. Yeah, but I think that's close to what her name is. And Peter sings a song, which sounds like cat meowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caterwauling. Yeah, and he's invited into the house, and then Mike sings a song, and he gets sprayed with a hose by the humans. Get him! <laughs> and this kind of thing is going to happen constantly, where Mike does something cruel to Peter, but then Mike is severely punished in a slapstick way. Yeah. So, other things that happen is uh, Mike sets up a math quiz where you have to say the, the, the answer with your tail, and so Peter is ridiculed for not having a tail, but uh, a snake that he befriended five minutes earlier pretends to be his tail and gives the answer for him. Right. And then Mike gets his tail bit a lot by the snake. Mm-hmm. They also have the Olympics. <laughs> oh, I was going to get there. Okay. Uh, in between that, there is a there's a birthday cake for the brother of the human family. Mm-hmm. Mike slips into the house, destroys the cake, and eats a crap ton of it, and then blames it on Peter. Makes it look like Peter did yeah. it. So Peter is locked up in the the, the laundry, laundry room. room. Mike has a terribly upset stomach and has a miserable time. Also, the laundry room burns down. Yeah, well, because someone left the iron on. Yeah, so uh, Peter almost dies, but he... Saves the family. Saves the family because he wakes them up with his crying for, oh, dear God, I'm going to die. (laughs) Yeah. So he's crowned a hero, which makes Mike really jealous that he got a medal. Uh Uh-huh. So he decides he's going to invent the Cat Olympics so that he can win. And he cheats by, like, every measurable way possible. 
He gives like super heavy balls to Peter. He gives him spiked shoes where the spikes are inside the shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, he uses a scooter to uh, cheat in the running race. Yeah. All kinds of things. But then he's caught cheating. And so Peter wins anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we end with Mike just straight up hosting a hate rally. A hate rally rally very nationalistic saying that country cats aren't worthy of living in their fine country i mean city right and, and so they when cats with no tails are a plague on society and stuff like that like and straight it's like, up realistic hate speech going on yeah here. yeah like inflammatory like, inflammatory shit and it's like what the hell i was not expect expecting this out of a children's movie well yeah because like obviously the the film's been very like anti-bullying up to this point mm -hmm. but then it it gets to this part and i'm like oh okay the movie's going there yeah it's like this is some straight up political like doxing shit and it's mm -hmm. like this is what i was not expecting this i forget how do they resolve this oh bullshit <laughs> so what they decide to do is they're going to sick the dog from earlier in the movie on Peter and it, it's going to chase him out of town. Totally going to chase him out of town, not kill him, which is obviously what Mike wants to happen. Right. He wants him to die. But then there's some hijinks with a kitten getting loose, like a baby child in this universe mm -hmm. getting loose and Peter saves it. And then... Uh, Mike and his stooges get chased out of town by the the dog. And then everyone, who was totally okay with all of this to hate terrible, speech. horrible hate speech and everything that Mike did beforehand, because Mike would always host a town meeting mm -hmm. with the other cats and be like, I'm going to make Peter miserable by cheating. And everyone's like, yeah, okay. That sounds fine. Yeah. It's like, what the hell? Right. But they're like, now that Mike's gone, they're like, oh man, Mike was evil and now everything's great because he's gone. <laughs> and it's like, you guys suck and are enablers and you are not Peter's it's like, friends. It's not just suddenly okay. <laughs> but the movie decides it's suddenly okay. Mm. And like, that's it. That's where the movie ends. Like, technically, Peter goes with his family on vacation out to the country, and they visit the farm where he's from, and the farmhand gives him a knowing wink or yeah. something. But, like, that part doesn't matter. No. And that's where the movie ends. Mm-hmm. The end. The bad guy got chased out of the country. I mean, town. Town. So, <laughs> this movie gets a sequel. In 1985. Oh. Peter No Tail in AmeriCat. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I Is it released the... to theaters? Do you know? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I guess I'll find out whenever I do There's also future research. a 1997 TV series and another film made in 2000 called Peter No Tail and the Great Treasure Hunt. So what you're telling me is this is like some sort of national treasure. And oh, it is absolutely. very much so loved in Sweden and potentially other parts of the world. I mean, from what I can tell in the, my research, yeah, this seems like a pretty beloved um, children's classic. It's been translated to multiple different languages in Europe. And um, the author and a lot of the characters of Peter No Tale have even had like several asteroids named after them. Okay. And just like, yeah, it, I I couldn't find a whole lot, but from what I can tell, it seems like this is a pretty beloved character. Uh, the books that this was based off of was a series written by Gosta Knotsen. Apologies to Sweden. Yeah. Uh, the book's cover topics such as class discrimination, bullying, and racism. They uh, were Yeah, they got that across in this movie. Yeah. The books were started in 1939. 
Oh. Yeah. Okay. And and were uh, there were books of them coming out until 1972. The author died in 1973. Um, but they were specifically satire and commentary on Nazism in Sweden during the late 30s. Yeah, I didn't want to really touch on that, but like that final hate speech scene felt very much so emulating mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Adolf himself. Yeah, and I think when you put it in that context, you're like, oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, it's just when I went into the movie, I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, watching it here in 1981, it's like, where is this coming from? Like, this seems sudden and a bit out of place. And I'd still argue that the movie still feels that way, mm -hmm. but in context of what the books are supposed to be, that at least makes sense now. Yeah, and ultimately the bad guy does get his comeuppance. Get his comeuppance. Yeah. Yeah. It's going for something good, but I, I'll say that it's probably a little tactless. Yeah. But it's also like a children's series, so, you know. It, it's a toss-up. <laughs> weigh, weigh your pros and cons there with that. Uh, this was directed by Stig Las Lasby and John Gisberg. Again, apologies. We don't know how to pronounce <laughs> Swedish words or names. Yeah. And uh, if you grew up with this character, I'd love to hear so down in the comments. I always love when we find stuff that is considered like a national treasure in other countries. Like, apparently, the movie we watched a couple weeks ago, Volk. Vol Vuk. Vuk. Yeah, is a national treasure. Is a national treasure character, and we had no idea. <laughs> Never heard of it. So I loved seeing all the comments from people being like, oh my god, I grew up with this, and this character is on, like, postage stamps. And <laughs> Someone was specifically, like, really enjoyed that we were uh, not just, like, head over heels for it and, uh -huh. like, being critical of it, because that's, like... It's a movie that, like, nobody talks bad it's about. It's sacrilegious to do so in the home country of, uh, uh, shoot, where is it from? Hungary. Hungary. Yes. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I was like, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't right. remember what it's called. Yeah. Hungary, yes. It's, like, sacrilegious to say bad things about Vuk and Hungary. <laughs> Everyone can tell about the directors here who worked on, um, this movie as well, they're also pretty, from what I can tell from their Wikipedia pages, it seems like they're also pretty well respected as like pioneers of animation in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So like this was a, this seems like this was a pretty big project. Yeah. Well, I mean, the animation pays off. Oh yeah. The animation like, was again. much better than I was expecting. Yeah. When. And also I should say that the style of the movie seems to be emulating the style of the books. That makes sense. Like mm -hmm. the illustrations in the book and stuff. Yeah. So similar to like Peanuts versus Peanut cartoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause it very, has a very distinct style and they make it work in animation very well. Mm -hmm. Like I, except I, when the characters don't quite look right They're Yeah. They, they do wobble on like the, the uncanny. Yeah, like, I'm gonna, I, I'm still gonna say that I think that Peter himself, when he's standing up, his face just looks wrong sometimes. Well, I think it's sometimes, like, his face is just squished too much, mm -hmm. or, like, the proportions just aren't quite right. Yeah. But like I said, this was a pretty nice film. I, I was definitely surprised by it. Yeah, I, I, when I found that it was going to be, like, a ten-part video thing on YouTube... You were like, oh no. <laughs> At like 480p. I, w I wish we could have seen like a higher quality version of this, but we still saw it and I'm happy that we did. Oh, I would also say that the dub was pretty good. Oh yeah. Like from what I can tell, the British dub here stayed pretty... True. Pre it sounded like they stayed pretty true to like the original intent of the uh, Swedish voice acting and storytelling mm -hmm. and stuff. And I mean, if this is a book series that's been translated to multiple different countries, including English mm -hmm. for the UK, like, yeah, I would... I would guess that to be true. Yeah. Like, they try to keep it fairly... 
Close to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like America where they're like, we got to change everybody's names and the locations and like restructure the movie so that it makes a completely different plot that is worse. <laughs> right. I mean, Peter No-Tail and like Mean Mike and, and the other characters have Swedish names. Yeah. I mean, I would in, expect that at yeah. least. Um, and I'm not going to attempt to say that, <laughs> but, but they roughly translate to these kinds of names. Mm-hmm. Well, either way, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be it for our review of Peter No Tail. So how about uh, people join us back here next time as we watch Shunmao Monogatari Tao Tao. Oh. Which is about pandas. Oh. Probably set in China, but uh -huh. it is made by Japan. Interesting. Yes. So, Tanil, I hope you enjoyed our... Uh, like month long vacation from, from Japan from Japan because we're going back again for a couple movies. Okay. As we are rounding out this year. I'd say we're gonna be done with this year in like the next month. Alright. Or less. I, I mean I don't still know quite exact... a few movies. Yeah, like three, four, uh -huh. maybe five. Alright. I don't know. Somewhere around there. I didn't count before this uh review started. Right. Alright, well, see you then. Swimming, oh swimming, the blue fishy waters run sweet and sweet. Fishes swim, herring swim, yes they swim. Fishes swim, where they swim.